All right. We have all had horrible fights with our parents. When afterwards we just say to ourselves, man, how the hell did we get to that? That was just absolutely awful. Well, that's what happened with me and my parents when I asked them if I can have a pit bull as a pet. And they said no. The purpose of my speech today is to educate you guys about the American Pit Bull Terrier. Because of my parents and many others who think that pit bulls are horrible pets, has led me to do extensive research and to do a speech about them. Everyone has a favorite animal. Mine is the American Pit Bull Terrier, also known as the Pit Bull. <laughs> this is Gracie. She is a two-year-old American Pit Bull Terrier, red nose. Um, when she was six months old, she was uh, playing in the yard of her previous owner's house and when the, uh, her neighbor came outside, got a shotgun and actually shot Gracie in the mouth <gasps> simply because uh, she was a pit bull. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but kind of right there, it droops a bit, her eyes a little bit lazy, but she's now living a normal, healthy life, but only because she was a pit bull and was kind of crossing over into the other guy's property is the reason why she was shot, but luckily she survived. Um, so, with that said, I'm here to tell you guys about the history, myths, and facts about pit bulls, so that what happened to Gracie won't happen to any other kind of dogs. So, the history. Pit bulls were originally bred in England, and for, uh, known for fighting and also known as baiting in the 1800s. In this sport, uh, a dog was trained to attack a bull, a bear, or other large animal around the face and head, and had to hang on without releasing his or her grip until the animal became exhausted from fighting, uh, or from a loss of blood, which was banned in the later 1800s for obvious reasons. So, uh, what these Englishmen did is that they brought their pit bulls to North America so that they can start dog fighting. Then in the 1900s, dog fighting became illegal. For you, those of you who don't know what dog fighting is, it is when an odor takes their dogs and treats them in a horrible manner. What they do is um, they take them, seclude them from all other animals, they punch them, they kick them, until that when ready and provoked to fight, they will be ready to fight other dogs as seen here. Um, when it is time for a dog to fight, they take their two best dogs and um, they'll fight till the death and bet on them. As cruel as this may sound, um, people still do it, such as the asshole Michael Vick. Um, since these dogs were bred to fight for about 100 years, this explains why there are many myths of, and stereotypes about pit bulls. But these myths and how dangerous they are never apply or relate to people. This is true because the Englishmen bred these dogs specifically to be loyal to humans, but not towards animals. So if you guys ever decide to want to own a pit bull, it is very um, crucial that you socialize them as soon as possible. I'll get rid of that for you guys so you don't have to look at it anymore. So now I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the main myths um, about pit bulls, just to educate you all on the truth. So how many of you have heard that pit bulls have locking jaws? Quite a few. Okay. Well, that in fact is not true. A locking jaw is when an animal bites down and their jaws will lock into place when there being no way possible for them to let go. Um, the studies that have been conducted of the structure of the skull, mandibles, and teeth of pit bulls show that in proportion to their size and the structure of the jaw and thus its inferred functional morphology is no different than that of any other type of dog. So there's absolutely no this is not absolute evidence for any type of animal's locking mechanism. Um, this test was done by Dr. Eiler Brisbane of the University of Georgia. There's no dog anywhere in the world out there that has a locking jaw. Nor do pit bulls have the most powerful bite, which leads me to my next fact. Many people think that pit bulls have the most powerful jaws and can crush anything at any time. A study was taken and aired on National Geographic. This study consists of pit bulls, German Shepherds, and Rottweilers. The way this test works is that they would have one guy hold the dog and the other guy provoke the dog while wearing a bike sleeve and a pressure gauge underneath 
so that they can record how strong each dog's bite really are. The dog with the strongest bite is the Rottweiler, with a bite pressure of 328 pounds per square inch. Next, with the second strongest bite, the German Shepherd at 238 pounds per square inch. And third, and the, the weakest or the lowest of the three dogs is the Pitbull, with 235 pounds per square inch. Dr. Barr states that, as far as he knows, the PSI tested four pounds per square inch is, um, for the Rottweiler is the highest on record of any domesticated canine, thus proving that Pitbulls are not the most powerful dogs out there. This doesn't mean that any of these dogs are vicious or mean. It just means that these myths about Pitbulls are simply not true. Another study done by Animal Planet showing that Pitbulls are not killers is that they did a study on the three top um, dogs that had the highest recorded bite count for domesticated dogs. And the dog with the highest bite count is the German Shepherd with the most bites. And number two with the second most bites is the Chow Chow. <laughs> and number three with the third most bites recorded is the beloved Golden Retriever. So you guys hear dog fights on the news and attacks? It's not the dog <laughs> or the pit bull that you might think it is. It's, you should blame the owners because honestly, there's no dog out there that's born mean or vicious. It's the way that the owners train them. So with that said, this whole thing started when I saw a very adorable blue-nosed pit bull puppy. Her name is Bella. Her owner actually goes to this school, and um, I saw her just walking to class the other day and decided like she was the perfect candidate for my speech. So when I asked my parents if I could have a pit bull, and they said no, that they are ferocious and no one should ever own one, has led me to do this research and plenty more that does not fit into the next speech. And what I've done is when I um, am able to move out, I will be the proud owner of a male blue nose and a female. Renos American Pitbull Terrier. <laughs> All right, Heidi, what did you think? Well, he did mention a couple of studies that had been done, the National Geographic study, for instance, and I think there was another one that he made reference to. Uh, I think there could have been a little bit more information, for instance, on the historical background uh, of the stuff that you were citing. Uh, so that maybe could have been filled in a little bit more. Uh, I thought you had an interesting attention device. You're using a personal experience here to kind of be the frame for your presentation. You, you want to be careful. I, I like the way that you phrased it because you're on the brink of making a persuasive argument, um, but you do kind of uh, phrase the thesis in a way that suggests that you are trying to clear up uh, information or educate us about some of these things and dispel those myths. So I thought that you got away with that. And there's a very good uh, setup there uh, with the speech. I didn't think the signposting internally was as clear as it might have been, uh, but the presentation was very smooth. Uh, you had, uh, I mean, every time you show the pictures of the dogs, people are enjoying that. People like dogs, and so it's easy for, you know, the audience to react to that. And uh, I thought you showed them at the appropriate times. The one thing that I thought maybe you could have added to that sequence of uh, the dog bites uh, would, with with the uh, PSI, maybe yeah, put the PSI a, number on the... Uh, uh, but it's a like a three, four minute video, yeah, no, no. Like I said, the only thing I would think that you might want to add on to the pictures that you had would just be the uh, P 
PS, the bite, the pressure, the pounds per square inch for each okay. of the three dogs that you showed, so that we get the visual reference to go along with the image that you've got there, and that might have made that work a little bit better. All right, thank you.